This lesson will provide the skills needed to configure and use RS Logic's Emulate 500 software. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to add and configure an SLC 500 emulator driver in RS Link software, open, configure, and start RS Logic's Emulate 500 software, and go online with RS Logic's Emulate 500 software using RS Logic's 500 software. RS Logic's Emulate 500 software can be used to scan and test ladder programs without using SLC 500 hardware. When online with RS Logic's Emulate 500 software, the emulator acts just like a processor. The emulator scans the ladder rungs in the selected program, pauses to update the output and input image tables, and scans the rungs again. The software updates data table values without having SLC 500 hardware and I.O. modules connected to the system. RS Logic's Emulate 500 software can scan ladder files created for all SLC 500 processors except SLC 503 8K processors and SLC 504 and SLC 505 processors with firmware release 10 and higher. RS Logic's Emulate 500 software places the ladder program and data tables into your computer's memory, and the files on your computer's hard disk are not affected. We'll go online with RS Logic's Emulate 500 software from a computer using RS Logic's 500 software. Communication between these two applications is facilitated by an SLC 500 emulator driver, which we set up in RS Link software. The most effective method of establishing communications is to configure RS Link software first, followed by RS Logic's Emulate 500 software, and then RS Logic's 500 software. Before RS Logic's Emulate 500 software and RS Logic's 500 software can communicate, RS Link software must be running and must have the proper communication driver set up and running. Let's get started by opening RS Link software and adding the SLC 500 emulator driver. First, from the Communications menu, let's select Configure Drivers. Within the Configure Drivers dialog box, let's click the Available Driver Types drop-down list and select the SLC 500 DH485 emulator driver. Then let's click Add New. Next, we can type a name for the driver. We'll use the default driver name EMU500-1. So we'll click OK. The Configure SLC 500 DH485 Emulator Driver dialog box opens. Because RS Logic's Emulate 500 software is treated as if it were a hardware device, it needs a unique station number. Let's change the station number for the driver. Next, let's type a station name for our driver, and then click OK. Within the Configured Drivers list, we can see that the emulator driver has been added and is running. Let's click Close. Let's open the RS Who window. We see that the emulator driver appears in the RS Who window. Let's click the emulator network icon in the tree control. Station 02 appears as active in the list control. Now that the driver is running in RS Links, we can configure and start RS Logic's Emulate 500 software. But before we do, Let's first explore the RS Logic's Emulate 500 toolbar. Using the toolbar, we can open, reload, and close files, select a program file to scan, run the emulator, halt the emulator, scan the entire program file once for testing purposes, scan the program file one rung at a time, and execute a single scan or a one rung scan. Now that we're familiar with the RS Logic's Emulate 500 toolbar, let's configure RS Logic's Emulate 500 software so we can scan ladder logic files. From the file menu, let's select Open. Notice that RS Logic's Emulate 500 software can open both RSS files and ACH files. Let's navigate to the location of the program file we want to scan using RS Logic's Emulate 500 software. Select the file and click Open. The RS Logic's Emulate 500 Settings dialog box opens, which lets us modify how the emulator will scan the ladder logic file. The main file number box indicates the ladder file from which the scan starts. During a program file scan, the main file, any subroutines, and any nested subroutines are executed. 
The start rung box lets us define the first rung in the file that we want to scan. And the end rung box lets us define the last rung to be scanned. The default setting of minus one provides a complete scan to the end of the file. To scan one rung, we can set the end rung to be the same as the start rung. Next is the station number, which creates a unique address used by RS Link software to identify and display the emulated processor. Let's assign 01 as the station number for the emulator. The Restore Mode on Start checkbox specifies whether RS Logic's Emulate 500 software retains the mode it was in when it was closed. Let's leave the Restore Mode on Start checkbox selected so the program will reopen in its last mode. Next, the debug files are files used to simulate the actions of I.O. in our system. Since RS Logic's Emulate 500 software does not recognize I.O. These files are scanned after each scan of the main program file. A debug file is not required, so let's use the default settings. Finally, the priority setting is a relative value indicating the amount of time spent in a scan before control is yielded to another application. Setting a higher priority value shortens the overall scan time, but could cause sluggish response in a system. Setting a lower priority value has the opposite effect. Scan time is lengthened, but the system is more responsive. For the priority value, let's move the slider until the priority is 35. We finished configuring our emulator, so let's click OK. Now that the emulator is configured, let's click Run from the toolbar. Notice that the Run button is grayed out, indicating that the emulator is running. If communication is lost between RS Link software and the emulator, the Run button becomes active. At any time, we can change the emulator configuration. From the settings menu, we'd select emulation and make the configuration change. Let's review what we've accomplished so far. The emulator driver is running in RS Link software, and RS Logic's Emulate 500 software is configured. Our final step is to go online with the emulator. We'll be following steps similar to those for going online with an SLC 500 processor. Let's begin by opening our RS Logics 500 project. Next, let's specify the SLC 500 emulator driver as the communication driver. To do this, from the Tools menu, let's select Options. Then, from the System Options dialog box, let's click the System Communications tab. Here's where we select a new driver. From the driver drop-down list, let's select the EMU500 driver, which we just set up in RS Link software. Then set the processor node to 1. Next, let's click Who Active, so we can select the emulator as the processor we want to go online with. On the Communications dialog box, let's select the emulator driver in the tree view, and then the SLC500 processor in the list view. Let's click OK to close the communication dialog box. Next, from the System Communications dialog box, let's click Apply to apply our changes. And then click Download. Let's enter Use Node 1 as the revision node. And then click OK. Then, when prompted to go online, we'll click Yes. Finally, let's place the SLC500 emulator processor in Run mode. Our latter program is now being scanned by the RS Logics Emulate 500 software. While online with the SLC 500 emulator, we can generate responses in a running ladder program by changing values of the I.O. bits, storage bits, or storage words acting as inputs in the program.